In recognition of the 4th of July, this show is filled with patriotic stories. Two organizations teamed up to visit the villages on June 26th and 27th because they knew how many veterans live in this community. American Veterans Center and the Gary Sinise Foundation met with 14 local World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam War era veterans to keep their stories alive and share with future generations. I would recommend doing it if you feel like you need to share your story. Period. It didn't have to be any other motive to it other than something that you would do for yourself. Just it, it, it lifts a burden. It ain't easy, but it lifts a burden. You, you got, it's like the only way to get to the other side of it is through it. They were certainly professional. They knew what the heck they were doing. And I think they were also very respectful. And uh, it, it was good. It was a good experience. Uh, I'll be an emotional. If I could contribute to another veteran not doing something drastic, as such as you know committing suicide, if I could find, if they could realize that there is hope, there are people that can and will help. Uh, if I could do that, and one guy hears it and it turns him around, I'm all about it, and that's what I'm doing here. The final piece for me that has gotten me. Uh, to a place beyond where I've been for the last 50 some odd years to, with the PTSD is Aviv. The Aviv Clinic has, I highly recommend it. They say you can't cure PTSD, or at least that's what I've heard uh, in my last 20, 50, 40 years. And uh, finally, somebody came out and said, we can cure it, and uh, they did. I'm standing here because they did. Gary Sinise Foundation Education Manager Tom Gibbs says they want to highlight for the younger generations the sacrifices that the men and the women of the armed forces have made for us and make sure that that history is not forgotten and that these folks are appreciated. These interviews will be available online through the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress at loc.gov. The mission of Quilts of Valor's foundation is to cover service members and veterans touched by war with comforting and healing quilts of valor. On January 24th, members of the Khaki Quilters, a chapter of the Quilting Guild of the Villages, presented beautiful handmade quilts of valor to five deserving veterans. My sister asked me about a year ago if, if I'd be interested in doing this, and most of us veterans, we don't want recognition. We, there's people that deserve a lot more than we did, and stuff like that. But I know she enjoys quilting and wanted to do it. And she was part of this quilt group from the villages here. And I said, yeah, go ahead. When you see the quilt, you know, it's got, it's got a picture of me first out of boot camp and then basically near the end. And it's kind of like, you know, there's, it's just, his memories that, like I say, I'll never forget. I mean, it's, and then I have a perfect place. And I'm, a lot of people will use theirs, mine will probably hang on the wall. The trouble is you can't see both sides of it, and both sides are really beautiful. It's postage stamp fabric, and my dad was a stamp collector, so I said it's got a little bit of dad in it too. And my mom was a sewer, so I have followed in her footsteps. I think it turned out gorgeous. I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of him. It's just special to see the men honored because they, I don't think they really expect it. Um, a lot of the veterans don't get that respect. They, they do a wonderful job here. If you're not part of the quilting group and you quilt, you need to be part of the quilting group. These people do a tremendous job and outstanding for the people. The first veteran to receive a quilt was Senior Master Sergeant Richard Meyer, who served in the United States Air Force from 1962 to 1996. L. Kirk Lewis was a colonel in the U.S. Army for 28 years. He says he flew the last airplane out of Vietnam and also spent decades working with the Department of Defense. Purple Heart recipient James Bradley was a sergeant in the United States Army. It's funny, it's, I think I tried to count that I was sitting in my seat. I think it was 55 years ago in Vietnam. And uh, this day kind of makes me remember it, but. I remember in a very positive and, uh, and with humility that uh, we all survived, the gentleman here, and uh, the war was difficult, but uh, 
I think we all can say we did our duty uh, to our country and we represented the United States of America very well. The final recipient was Charlie Phillips, a specialist in the U.S. Army. He says it was humbling to receive the quilt and he always felt like he owed this nation and the service far more than it has owed him. The khaki quilters have awarded more than 100 quilts of valor to veterans over the years. After this short break, veterans unite, so stay with us. Is diabetes ruining your life? Diabetes Relief Care, located in Majuvia Life Centers on 441 and Lady Lake, can help you get back to your active lifestyle. With our diabetes treatment, insulin is administered as a hormone rather than a drug. Majuvia will co-manage your individualized care plan with your doctor for treatment, testing, and clinical results. Call for a private consultation and see how our diabetes treatment can help you. And yes, we accept Medicare. Visit DRC Village com or call 352-644-9512. Village's Honor Flight held one of its biggest and most attended events of the year in February, a fashion show inside North Lake Presbyterian Church. The models were all local veterans who had been on a Village's Honor Flight mission. The women picked out and wore clothes from Anthony's Apparel and sunglasses from Shades on the Square. The men wore clothes from Coles, and a few of the veterans were escorted on stage by members of the Sweet Potato Queens, a chapter right here in the Villages. One of those veterans was Harry Clark, who served during World War II. Oh, I enjoyed it. I love making a ham out of myself. <laughs> this is my fifth or sixth year, and uh, I, I cherish every, every bit of it and the friends I made. This year I was especially happy to do it because my son's here, and I thought putting him in an audience with 200 beautiful women, or somebody told me there was 300. I think he was the only man, the only man I saw there. Harry has always been happy to volunteer his time to attend or be part of a village's honor flight event because his flight mission meant so much to him. For a while, I was doing the talks for the honor flight. They were asking me, and I, you know, I'm a ham, I get up and do things. And uh, I couldn't talk about honor flight, so I told jokes because I got so emotional. It was just a real experience. You remember the guys you served with, those that are gone? I think everybody that can go should certainly go. Village's Honor Flight is always seeking more volunteers to fill various roles. Learn more on their website. Back on May 31st and June 1st, just over 100 female military veterans within this community experienced the first ever all-women Honor Flight organized in the state of Florida. Later on, they gathered again for a special reunion inside North Lake Presbyterian Church. The trip was totally awesome. I had been on the Honor Flight as a guardian and squad leader previous to this trip. This time I was a squad leader and veteran, and to go as a veteran was totally different. There were more people at BWI to meet the women veterans. Um, and then the same going into the Navy Museum, um, to see all the active duty there was awesome. <laughs> I recommend it for all veterans. Even, even the fellows that have, they say, oh, I've been to D.C. a million times. To go, on the to go on the plane, to go on the bus, to be greeted by crowds of people is just, I don't know, there's no words for it. It makes a big, big difference. Uh, and the fact that we are women veterans made it even more special because, you know, like, um, some people say, well, what, what service was you, what did your husband do in the service? Well, yeah, granted, my husband was in the service, and he was Army, and he was retired, and no one bothers to ask me what I did. But still, people don't think of women as veterans, particularly those of us that are a little older. <laughs> well, like I was a nurse. They don't look at what the other women in our organization, the Tri-County Women Vets, what they have done. They've been air traffic controllers, they've flown, they've, you know, they've worked on planes, they've worked on vehicles. They've done all the stuff that the men do also, but no one thinks about that. If you are a veteran that wants to go on a flight, you can visit villageshonorflight.org to fill out an application.
Up next, female veterans are celebrated. If you have a hearing loss but won't wear a hearing aid, we have exciting news for you. It's the Lyric Invisible Hearing System. It's placed deep in your ear canal, it's completely undetectable, and the insertion process takes only minutes with no surgery, medication, or pain involved. You wear 24 hours a day, there's no maintenance and no batteries to change. You can sleep, shower, and exercise with it. And practically the time it's taken us to tell you about this hearing device, we just fit this patient. Call right now and find out if Lyric is right for you. This hurricane preparedness tip from VNN and WVLG is brought to you by The Villages Insurance. Hi, this is WVLG staff forecaster Christopher James. Supplies are exceptionally important during this hurricane season. What type of supplies? At least a three-day supply of bottled water or a minimum of one gallon per person per day. At least a three-day supply of non-perishable, easy-to-prepare food. A manual can opener, flashlights and extra batteries, multi-purpose tools such as a Swiss Army knife, cell phones with chargers and a car charger adapter, battery-powered or hand-crank radio and extra batteries, family and emergency contact info, extra cash, a map of the area in case GPS services are down. Keep listening for more information, including supplies, pet tips, and detailed information to keep on hand during hurricane season, presented by The Villages Insurance. And thanks for listening to Your Villages Soundtrack, WVLG. More than 2 million women veterans live in the United States, and every March for Women's History Month, the American Legion Auxiliary honors female veterans with the annual Women Veterans Luncheon. This year was held March 13th at American Legion Post 347 in Lady Lake. We're honored to have one because not everybody recognizes women veterans, so the fact that there's entities out there that want to celebrate our women veterans, um, if I can make it, I will. The only time I, I seem to have to prove myself as a gender, ironically, is out of the service. I, I'm faced on a daily of asking, people asking me, is this my hat, did I serve, um, and not acknowledging us. And so I, I find that really odd. I've given my all. Uh, I took care of our combat wounded in Afghanistan. I love it when young people say, I'm going to join X, you know? because I think that it teaches you more than just serving your country, you know? And I think we're missing that in the conversation with some of the young people from where we need to go today for tomorrow. Well, at first, the men didn't quite treat us as equals, but with time and a lot of training and some education, the guys did, and after they could see what we could do too, they did start to treat us more as equals and value our input and I were. But I knew that they didn't think I was as good as they were. So, you know, in it, not just in the military, but in all fields back in the 1970s and 80s, women had to work harder to be seen as equal. I got to serve my country, and that's what I was after, first of all. I got to see some other countries. I had never left the United States when I joined the Navy. Um, I met wonderful friends. There is a camaraderie through the military, not just in the Navy, but in all the services, that wherever you go, you're never alone. One in every six residents in the villages has served in the military, and of those, 320 are women who have served their country since World War II. Earlier this year, Villagers for Veterans took ownership of a Fruitland Park home. They have turned into Ashley's Cottage, a transitional home for homeless female veterans. This transitional home and one being built in Eustis are both named in honor of First Lieutenant Ashley White Stumpf, who was killed during combat operations in 2011 in Afghanistan. Her mother, Deborah White, was at the ribbon cutting May 20th. One thing that uh, Ashley's mom, uh, uh, Deb, said to us is that she's honored um, that we have chosen Ashley to represent um, this house because she knows that her daughter will never be forgotten. It humbles me that this organization, Villages for Veterans, saw the need and just didn't continue to talk about the need, but went ahead and formulated a plan to put this into action. So many people have tried to make sure that 
we had been thinking about all the aspects of how to help our women veterans. So the office space that we have um, will have three computers that they can utilize to do their interviews or they can write their resumes or they can do their homework. So we already have that space taken care of that they can go in a quiet place. It's not a part of the house, it's adjacent to it. But um, I think that's the best part is that we have tried to show them where and how they can get their help. So Saturday was the culmination of four and a half months of nonstop work with all our amazing volunteers. Uh, we basically took this house down to the wood and build it up again. It's really great to see it come to life like that and to be such an adequate place where these women that are gonna journey through here will find a space where they can uh, really heal. And that's what it's all about, healing and moving forward. We had tons of volunteers uh, from the villages, from outside the villages, uh, volunteers that work with Habitat for Humanity and of course Habitat was a big part of helping us put this together and uh, especially one amazing volunteer Martha Cole who is 83 years old and she painted this whole house by herself from the inside to the outside and every nook and cranny and it's wonderful to see the community coming together and rallying behind these women in support so that they can move forward and hopefully be able to pay it forward to other women veterans that are coming out. And as you know, homeless women veterans is the fastest growing demographic in today's military. Ashley's Cottage is located in Fruitland Park. 75 years ago, then President Harry S. Truman signed the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, allowing women to serve in the United States Armed Forces. On June 12th, that is Women's Veterans Recognition Day. And in celebration, Tri-County Women Veterans hosted its third annual event at Belle Glade Country Club. I was among the first women, or the group of first women that went uh, to sea duty once uh, the legislation was passed in 1978 and opened up sea duty billets to women. I volunteered in 1980 to go to sea and they sent me to the Puget Sound, which was a repair ship. We repaired destroyers, uh, aircraft carriers, everything but subs we repaired. I love being at sea because you have a real job to do, you have a mission, you have the best people in the world working for you, which are Navy enlisted, and you just have a, a real purpose to do things. Because we have fought for so long to, number one, be recognized as full participants in the military that have invaluable contributions to the military and to celebrate the fact that finally we were recognized and brought into the military services as full members and just to celebrate that all of us have done something that's the first or unique we have all broken glass ceilings there isn't anyone here that hasn't been the first to do something or among the first to do something and it's just an honor to be with all these women that have such diverse experiences. Um, I'm kind of humbled. So my dad was career military, he was a World War II vet, and he was in the Air National Guard in New York. And so it was kind of uh, decreed, kind of when I was born. I keep telling everybody that uh, my dad enlisted me when I was born. And so it, it just became the right thing to do. Um, I joined the Air National Guard in New York. Did re-enlist in 1992 at March Air Force Base uh, and then stayed in until 2003, retiring as a lieutenant colonel. I was the first enlisted female in my guard unit in 1972. There were nurses, but not enlisted. And so just to be able to share these stories with these women who have had diverse careers and we range in age from the 70s to the 50s. We're all so different, but yet we're all so the same. My dad was career Air Force. I was in Air Force ROTC in high school. I loved it, you know, made good friends there. And so I just knew that was something I wanted to do. I signed up as avionics, which means I was an electrician on helicopters. And so I did that for a couple of years, and then our commandant actually came in and took out all the WMs, or women Marines, out of combat MOSs. So I had to redesignate. And so uh, after 
trying out a couple of different jobs. A maintenance uh, admin job came open, which is doing the logs and records on aircraft, because I wanted to stay in aviation, so that gave me the opportunity to do that. So then I did that and uh, went to a uh, jet squadron, and we did a lot of deploying. We went over to Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. Um, so it was kind of neat. We do have a place in the service, and so it's important that uh, everyone recognizes that. Since 1999, the Tri-County Women Veterans Group has grown from about 27 members to more than 300 women veterans. They meet at 11 a.m. on the third Monday of each month at Palmer Legends Country Club. The Sunshine State is home to one of the largest populations of women veterans in the nation. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there are roughly 2 million women veterans in the U.S. We'll be back with more patriotic stories from Florida's friendliest hometown. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. And air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible. So call for a free inspection today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. Rocking, dancing, relaxing, or romancing. Thank you for listening to Your Village's soundtrack, WVLG. On March 29th, Fairway Christian Church had its second annual National Vietnam War Veterans Day Remembrance Celebration. It was a moment for some veterans in attendance to finally have some peace. We did six hour tours basically every day. And uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't so pleasant sometimes working through the rain, the monsoon season, uh, what you might happen at night, you know, especially under the cover of night. but. Thank God that uh, a lot of us made it back. I probably had a lot of mixed feelings because of the way a lot of guys were treated when we came back. I know guys that could not even get a job when they came back uh, because of the fact that they served in Vietnam. Uh, they were labeled, I mean, nasty things, you know. But uh, I guess time heals a lot of things and hopefully Things have been healed by now. During this whole ceremony here, I kind of made peace with things. I mean, we're in a church, and I said to myself, you know what? It's time to just let things go and uh, just take it for what it is, you know? I mean, people do try to make amends, not even make amends, it's the wrong word, but people are trying to welcome people back and like let's just let's just be good to each other and that's it more than 200 people gathered at the church and were welcomed in by members of the church's military outreach ministry marlene wilkie a member of the church's military outreach ministry says as one of few church-based outreach programs in the nation that is focused on military and veterans it was appropriate for them to view this event Early in the morning on May 28, thousands of volunteers, including at least 200 from the villages alone, placed more than 120,000 American flags at the graves of veterans at Florida National Cemetery for flags for fallen vets. The names of every soldier was read aloud to make sure they are never forgotten, and they were thanked for their sacrifice and service.
being here today, seeing all these flags, it's just amazing. And it's just heartwarming and very surreal. Um, you have to be here to appreciate it. The military is very much in my life and in my heart. And um, I joined the service because I love this country and I wanted to serve. So, um, and just thinking about all these people that sacrifice so much, this is amazing. People just don't think about Memorial Day as those who gave their all, they sacrificed. They think of it as a day to go out and have a picnic, pools being open, and you know, it's, it's the wrong um, way to think about Memorial Day, and it, it's sad to think that people have lost the meaning, meaning of what Memorial Day is. And um, so I just, I hope people will start uh, learning more about what Memorial Day means. This is what made this country what it is. And if it wasn't for them and their sacrifice, this country wouldn't be and have the freedom that we have today. Oh, on this weekend, this is the time to honor our veterans who laid down their lives for their uh, fellow uh, Americans. Oh, it's very emotional. Uh, when I get to my husband's grave and I see a flag placed on his grave site, it's just amazing. And to look at all the flags afterwards when it's all done, it's just beautiful, <laughs> glorious. I'm so pleased to see how many people have come today. And it's such a gorgeous day uh, that it will be wonderful if others did this also uh, in the coming years. Flags for Fallen Vets takes place at every national cemetery in the country ahead of Memorial Day. It's time now for a brief commercial break. We'll be right back. The number one complaint that I hear from most of my patients, and, and remember, some of these patients are here against their will, right? Somebody sent them here. They came in kicking and screaming with their, with their arms crossed. And even those folks uh, will tell me their biggest issue that they, that they think they have or that they even will acknowledge is understanding people in social settings. <laughs> you can have a, a very subtle high frequency loss and very good normal low frequency hearing, and you get into a crowd with noise, you're lost, right? You hear people, but you don't understand them. All you have to do by law to, to fit somebody with a hearing aid is have them push a button to tones, have them repeat words in a quiet situation, and uh, do bone conduction, uh, where they put a bone oscillator on your head, right? That's all it takes legally. But, but if somebody tells me, hey doc, I can't hear well in noise, or, or I'm lost in crowds, don't I want that information? Don't I, don't I want to assess that? So speech and noise testing is, is is my favorite uh, test that I run uh, with patients because it quantifies their acknowledgement of, of a complaint that they know they have. It lets me show them, compared to normal hearing individuals, this is your handicap in noise. We hope you enjoyed these patriotic stories that have happened right here in your community. Thanks for watching. So I got the scan um, and they found a lung nodule. The uh, surgeon, he said where the lung nodule was located in the upper portion of my right lung. I would have never had any discoverable problems or symptoms or issues until it would have been basically stage four and had escaped the lung. I do, I do believe that that craft body scan saved my life because like, as, as I mentioned earlier, without getting the scan, it could have been too late. Streaming live from Lake Sumter Landing in a small building with big windows near the water. AM 640, 102.7 and 104.5 FM. Your soundtrack to the villages. WVLG Wildwood.